This is a PowerBook 145B, Apple's entry-level laptop from 1993. Introduced as a replacement for the Macintosh Portable, this machine weighed 4.2 kilos less and was less bulky, which makes it much more worthy of that portable title. Today, we're going to have a look at what this machine can do and a few of its quirks. As soon as the machine boots, we're introduced to the first quirk, a passive matrix display. Unlike the active matrix displays that we use widely now, where each pixel has its own thin film transistor for individual control, passive matrix displays use intersecting electrodes in rows and columns. This means that when the display wants to activate a pixel, voltage is applied to entire rows and columns, making the output slower and less precise. Even in 1993, this was considered somewhat outdated technology, with the PowerBook 170 released around the same time, including an active matrix display. This machine shipped with four megabytes of RAM, which many considered even at the time to be insufficient for System 7, which takes up about a megabyte on its own, compared to System 6's roughly 600 kilobyte memory footprint. I've personally found multitasking on this machine to be impossible, and some applications even struggle running on their own. It could be worse though, the PowerBook 140 and 145 that came before the 145B are only shipped with two megabytes of RAM. But what can this machine do? It has a 25 megahertz 68K Motorola chip, which manages its assignment okay. System 7, while familiar feeling, is quite clunky, though it is well suited to the black and white display. File manipulation is no problem. I don't think it's called Finder at this stage, but it works basically the same way more recent classic macOS explorers do. Something that feels quite charming on this machine in 2023 is the fact that a floppy drive is the main way to transfer data. As such, I have a USB floppy drive, which I use with my iBook G3 to download software from sites like Macintosh Repository. As you'd expect, Office programs like Microsoft Office work quite well. It is not a good experience in a modern context, but it gets the job done. Programs like Word and Excel work, and the keyboard is actually not too bad to type on. Just for fun, I thought I'd try some games. This is a very old version of KidPix. Yeah, I don't think this is the best machine to get creative on, but it runs. I also tried this Ford Racing Simulator, which was hilarious. It also has a virtual showroom that lets you see the car's specs. One thing I'd really like to do with this laptop is swap out the SCSI hard disk for something solid state. I'd be doing two things at once, fixing that horrific noise that comes out of this thing and future-proofing the storage. I can't imagine that the SCSI drive in this machine would be in very good health, even if I haven't noticed any problems so far. So I hope you enjoyed this quick look at a super early example of a PowerBook. Let me know if there's any software you'd like me to try in particular, or if there's something I've missed. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.